Hey everyone, it's uh, Caffeine Injected. That's my YouTube name. Um, I wanted to record a little bit more. It's, it's fun, I enjoy recording. Maybe I'll do... Uh, I really want to do some stuff for my video game that I'm working on, but I've just been so lazy and haven't done much on it lately. But eventually when I get going on it, I'll, I'll do some more vids. But I wanted to talk about MMOs a little bit, I guess. You know, I love playing MMOs. and um, I just wanted to say that right now, you know, there really aren't any... And I've played most of the the big mainstream MMOs that people have played, you know, Black Desert Online and Ion and uh, Guild Wars 1, Guild Wars 2, uh, what's the Skyrim, the online one? I played that one as well, Elder Scrolls Online, Vindictus, C9, all of Vindictus isn't really an MMO, um, Neverwinter, uh, and a lot more, a lot, a lot more. But right now, the state of MMOs, which everybody already knows this, is pretty bad. Um, the the, the free-to-play model, I think, really just doesn't work. I really don't like it because of the way they try to do microtransactions and and stuff like that. And I'll listen to the beautiful, the rain and vanilla wow. Just, I don't know how to... <laughs> I don't really like it. Um, I really enjoy that. Teldrassil is one of, my, if not my favorite areas in vanilla wow. Um, it's, it's just a really nice area. Anyways, um, so the state of WoW, the state of MMOs, you know, Chronicles of Illyria is coming out. Uh, I guess they're going to do maybe a new a first alpha next year sometime. I think that Ashes of Creation, and I don't know this for a fact, obviously, but I, I hate it when I say obviously. I hate my, my fucking Mike Tomlin. Um, but I believe, my opinion is that Ashes of Creation is trying to kind of rush a little bit because I think they kind of want to beat... Chronicles of Valyria to market because to me those two are definitely competing in most right now. They have a lot of great ideas. I myself personally favor Chronicles of Valyria based on the what they say they're going to have versus what Ashes of Creation says it's going to have. I think they both sound you know good, but I really 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 like Chronicles of Valyria's how they're treating magic as a very extremely rare thing. I guess like Star Wars Gal Galaxies, which I actually never did play. But, um, and a lot of things that Chronicles of Lyria have, have decided to go with, things they've, they've been thinking of, is stuff that I actually had been planning on putting in my game, but that I, you know, obviously I'm, so, I'm a bit of a programmer for, I, had, I said obviously again. <laughs> I've been a programmer for a very long time, over 20 years, um, and I really have always wanted to be a game developer. I mean, even coming out of high school, I knew that's what I wanted to do. But, you know, back in 1988, yes, that's how old I am when I graduated. These types of careers weren't as easy. They, they didn't exist as much. They wasn't, it isn't like it is now. Um, but having said all that, I've, throughout the years, have always been um, doing 3D animation, you know, not so much character modeling, but I've done 3D animation. I've done a lot of just asset, art asset creation. Um, I'm a pretty skilled, you know, uh, draftsman. Um, I also play music. I, I've always been into art. My family's into art. So it's definitely what I've always wanted to do. So I'm working on my own game. I'm trying to <laughs> not blab on too much, but I always tend to. Um, I don't script these videos out. I just get on and, and speak my mind. So it tends to sound like a uh, like I'm blabbing, I guess. But um, I have a lot of stuff I've done for my game. Um, I don't want to talk about it too much because I don't want people to steal my ideas, really. But what's funny is that Chronicles of Larry has implemented, I would say, two or three of the bigger ideas I really wanted to put um, into uh, the game I'm working on, which I was just going to make it a very, very, very small uh, RPG with, I mean, you could almost think of it as like a vertical game slice. I just wanted to initially create um, all of the corner game systems in a vertical game slice so that I could learn and teach myself how to put those pieces together in the Unreal Engine. You know, I've, I've worked with, with the Unreal Engine a little bit, not a lot. I'm going through a class on Udemy right now. Um, you know, God bless you, Ben Tristam. I love that guy. He's just a great teacher. Um, but anyways, um, so the MMOs really haven't been that great. So I play World of Warcraft Vanilla because I just, I really enjoy it. I really like it. I think that Vanilla has still to this day some of the great, the best aspects of what an MMO should really have. And what I think that is, is the ability for players to enjoy the leveling experience, but to, in certain points in time, need help from other people to to level it at, at, at a pace that's enjoyable as opposed to feeling like you're all by yourself. And, um, and so that fosters, you know, friendships and relationships and, and, uh, it just makes people uh, more enjoyable to play with and it makes everybody friendlier if they need 
if they need you to help them. If I need, if I don't need anybody to help me in an MMO and I don't require help, then it's very easy to take the attitude of I'm just going to um, do everything myself and I'm better than you because I don't need your help and fuck you. I can do what I want. I don't need help. And it just, it, it just fosters a bad attitude. And then when you put in the microtransactions and people can buy stuff that help their leveling experience go faster or give them an edge, then it becomes this you know, one-upping type of philosophy, which I really don't like, um, where everybody's trying to beat everybody else because they're playing solo a lot. A lot of people are playing solo. So because of that, to prove to other people that you're really good at the game or that you're good at progressing, you, you, you can only prove it to them by what you, what you look like almost. You know, what gear do you have? You know, what level are you? Um, but there's something's lost in all of that, and that's how good are you with your mechanics of your player in a group concept. So anyways, I'm not really going to talk about that too much more. And like I said, I don't script this stuff, so that just came off the top of my head. Um, but what I wanted to talk about was Chronicles of Lyria and, uh, and Ashes of Creation. And I do think both games look really interesting. I think Ashes of Creation is, has been more open to the public. And I, I was reading a post that somebody has shared with me on Discord. I don't know who it was, but thank you. And it was basically talking about how Chronicles of Lyria started out being very open with people, but they felt like they lost a little bit of that. And, and, they're, and they're trying to get back to that. There's, there's, a, there's a tiptoeing, and I firmly believe this as well. And, and I've been a firm for so long. I've worked on development teams. I've led developers. Uh, I've, been, I've managed teams. I've done all of that. I've used you know, agile and sprint methodologies and all of that. So I, I fully understand how to manage and, and how you can't always tell everybody everything because it, you, you raise expectations or you set false expectations. And then when those things aren't met, you know, when those things aren't met, it can be, uh, it can really be disappointing for the player base. So, you know, I understand how, why they do that. And, but the, the gamers nowadays are getting so, uh, they're getting so spoiled because people like Ninja Theory, um, people like Wild, you know, Wildstar, uh, when NCSoft uh, was doing Wildstar, um, those games are trying to give stuff to the public, Star Citizen as well, trying to basically communicate everything. And I'm not sure that's the best policy. I think with Star Citizen, it's a good idea because of the length. I think, actually, I think it's a great idea because of how long the game's going to be in development. And it seems like, to me, this is one of those games that's almost like a continuous release game. I don't think they'll ever um, say, hey, this is when it's going to be done. I'm not sure it'll ever be done. <laughs> Someone just texted me, uh, those bastards. <laughs> I'm a big Pittsburgh Steelers fan, and they text a picture of a, a girl wearing a Steelers shirt and crying. Oh, that bastard. Um, but I, I think that for Star Citizen, it's a good idea. But uh, uh, for something like Ashes of Creation and, and Chronicles of Lyra, I think you're really walking a fine line there. Um, a lot of game players don't understand what goes into development. They don't understand what goes into planning. They don't understand that things will go in and out of the game. I mean, I'm, a lot of them do. Um, I mean, I've talked to people in Discord that, and who just don't understand what it takes to code some of this stuff. Um, and they'll say, I want this, and I, I, want, I want them to put this in the game. And I try to explain to them that that just isn't really a good idea, And but I don't care. I want it. And there's a lot of, you know, <laughs> there's a lot to understanding how the game is made and how things work. And I think the one thing that, I'm, that scares me about Ashes of Creation is I don't think they're trying to f narrow their focus of their target audience enough. And to me, that's the kiss of death for a lot of MMOs. I feel like Chronicles Lyric is doing a much better job of just saying, this is what we're going to do. And sure, you know, we'll listen to you guys. And maybe we'll cater to you a little bit. But, I mean, they have an idea of how they want their game to be. And it's more locked in than what I think uh, Ashes of Creation is doing. And uh, to me, that's a good thing. Uh, plus, I really like how, how they're talking about um, trying to, to create something that isn't so much a high fantasy game. It's more of, it's definitely a fantasy game. Because if you look at the character artwork of the creatures in the world that exist, there, these are not the normal kind of creatures you would walk into on, you know, find on planet Earth. Um, so to us, it is fiction of some kind. And... Uh, so, you know, so I think that I'm on board with them a little bit more, but the, both games are so far away, we have to wait and see. But anyways, I wanted to, to kind of talk about that, but I also wanted to <laughs> jump into WoW, and I wanted to show you guys uh, if you guys play vanilla WoW. There's a great video out there on how to change things in your graphical settings. Um, but there's two settings that I like to use that I think are a lot, kind of fun, and I just want to show those real quick since a lot of people probably don't know. Um, there's a lot of things you can do to make your graphics look a little bit better in vanilla WoW. People have 
you know, people <clears throat> even install different add-ons where they can load different um, character models. I haven't gone to the, that extent yet, but I'm thinking about trying it, actually. I may try it, but I just never thought I'd be in Vanilla WoW long enough to where it really made that big a it was really that much of a priority. But one of the things you can do, and there's a lot of console commands you can you can use, and one of the ones that I really like is frill density. So if you go in and type console um, frill density, you can bump it up to like, and you can see how it basically it's just adding more foliage to the ground. Um, And, you know, obviously the higher number generally is going to push it up. But again, the redraw distance, you can see how it cuts off. But watch how I walk. Notice how the foliage is being drawn in the distance. See how the grass is popping up on the horizon? Um, that's the way um, World of Warcraft works. That's the way that most games work. Uh, LOD maps, level of display, uh, level of detail. Um, so basically there's a, a distance from your character where the computer is going to draw a little bit better detail. Um, so that's one of the settings that you can change if you feel like it. I like to just, in particular in Vanilla Wild, a lot of times you can't see some of the things on the ground if there's too much foliage. So I'm not really... I just like to put it, at, I think the default is 60. I just put it on 60, which is fine. Um, the other setting that I, that I change, which is kind of interesting, it doesn't make a huge effect, but it's worth playing around with, um, which is FX Glow. One makes it a little bit brighter. This is the default setting. See how, like, even the light coming through uh, my character Faith Driven's hair kind of, almost like some of there's a mild spotlight. Um, a lot of people probably would prefer this, and that's why it's the default setting. I actually prefer zero. I don't know why, but I think it makes it maybe slightly more somber. I'm not sure why, but I do prefer this a little bit more. Those are just two settings I was going to show you, and some people can play around with those. There's a lot more. The other ones that I, I really enjoy, really like that I think are applicable is you can change the particle effects of your spells. So perfect example is the Frost Mage's Blizzard. So you can you type in the console and basically adjust how many of those particles are coming down when a Frost Mage casts, casts his Blizzard, um, or some of the other spell effects like that. Um, and there's other settings too. There's a Maybe I'll try to find the video and and link it in this video if I ever, if I feel like not being too lazy. But check it out, just Google it, there's different things. I think the video is called something like uh, um, Increase WoW Graphic Detail or Maximize WoW Vanilla Graphics or Maximize World of Warcraft Graphics. Um, some of these console commands work in different versions of WoW, so some will work in Vanilla, some won't. So even in that video, I think a lot of the ones he put in there that I tried didn't work. Um, but definitely, definitely look into that stuff. Um, I'm hoping that Blizzard doesn't uh, ban me for showing this type of content because that would really suck because I actually enjoy my YouTube channel. Um, I'm not posting this video trying to get people not to play Blizzard's game. I mean, I played their game for you know nine or ten years and I sunk thousands and thousands of dollars into their game. So I would hope that <laughs> they, they understand that I'm just playing this personally myself because I love the game, um, not because I'm trying to in any way uh, hurt their game, their retail game. You know they. I'm not really going to say much about um, their game too much, the current state of the game. It is what it is. So I'll just say that I love vanilla. Um, but anyways, I'm going to try to level up my priest. I'll probably This is uh, the Elysium server on uh, the Elysium Project website. So you guys can Google it and find it. Uh, peak, peak population is usually around 8,000, 8, um, which is good, very good. And usually when I'm on... Um, it's around, you know, 5,000 maybe. If I use slash, you can see that this is actually hardly anybody. But I mean, I am in Darnassus, which people don't tend to sit in here very long. But usually, when um <clears throat> when I'm in Teldrassil and do slash you, I'll you know get 20, 30, 40 people, and it seems to get you know busier and busier as the night goes on. So that's it for this video. Um, when I do start doing more of my game development with uh, the Unreal Engine and Blender, do my art assets in Blender. Uh, and some other things. I'll start putting videos up on that. And uh, if anybody watched this, thanks for watching. If not, well, that's just the way it goes. <laughs>